Hi, Fifth Period, and whoever else might be watching this. This video is about Laura Wheeler Waring, a Harlem Renaissance painter who became famous for her portraits. Citations for pictures and facts will be in the bottom right corner. The picture I'm recreating is Portrait of Anna Washington Derry from 1927. I hope you enjoy! Laura Wheeler Waring was a famous black artist of the Harlem Renaissance. She was born in 1887 in Hartford, Connecticut, where she lived out her childhood. Waring was born to an upper-middle-class black family. Her father was a Howard University graduate, and her mother was a classical painter. Because of this, she had many opportunities to excel. Waring graduated high school with honors and attended the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts for six years. Her own background in schooling led her to value education greatly, especially education in the arts. She created visual art and music departments for many Philadelphia schools and helped these departments grow for over 30 years. Waring's first paintings were done on trips to Europe and primarily in France. Famous Harlem Renaissance poet and novelist Jessie Redmond Fawcett accompanied her to France in 1924. She married Lincoln University professor Walter E. Waring in 1928, who introduced her to many prominent Harlem Renaissance figures. Laura Wheeler Waring's overwhelming amount of formal training in fine art, which was incredibly rare for any painter of her time period, led her to have a very European worldview, or at least pertaining to art. The reasons for her many European travels were mainly to study the work of other famous artists, including Claude Monet. Her earliest art, including her 1916 painting Heirlooms, and her 1925 painting, Houses at Sumir, France, look like something that any other classical European painter would have created at the time. However, when she returns to America for the final time and becomes entrenched in the Harlem Renaissance, her painting starts to change. It becomes less like something she copied off of a painting in the Louvre and more of her own distinct style of art. Little Brown Girl, and Girl in Green Cap are good examples of this. Laura Waring is most famous for her portraits of famous Harlem Renaissance figures and wealthy black people, all of which are done in a traditional European style of Impressionism. To make an analogy, Waring is to art as Kante Cullen is to poetry. She can create high art that is traditionally created by white people while still maintaining her black identity. One can see it from Langston Hughes' point of view as shown in The Negro Artist in the Racial Mountain, though, and view Waring as the black artist who wishes to be white, and therefore makes her art as white as possible. It is easy to see why some might think this. Laura Waring's paintings are 90% upper-class black people or famous black artists, or both. Unlike the average Harlem Renaissance artist who is interested in capturing the daily lives of average black people, she was a professional painter who only did portraits of the very wealthy who could afford it. Case in point, the painting I am recreating is Anna Washington Derry, a prominent woman in Philadelphia. She has created some portraits of average people, including mother and daughter, shown here, but they are few and far between. Laura Wheeler Waring's portraits are almost entirely of black people, yet done in a traditionally European style. Her portraits, all being of black people, most of which you write or perform about what it means to be black, shows that she is fascinated with black identity. She shows this fascination in a different way than some of her fellow painters, Aaron Douglas or Jacob Lawrence, though. Douglas and Lawrence embrace a style of painting that completely embodies black identity, loud, vibrant, and unashamed. Waring prefers to use softer, earthier tones in her art. Another aspect in the art of Douglas or Lawrence not present in Waring's portraits are the over-exaggerated poses and the jarring, not-quite-right anatomy of the people present. Laura Waring, once again, takes a very traditional approach to posing and anatomy. She uses the common portrait staple of drawing busts turned at a three-quarter angle quite often. This is part of her classical training at a fine art school, but also shows her very safe approach to art. Simple, basic still lifes and traditional portraits are a far cry from the zany art that typically goes with the Harlem Renaissance. When asked her opinion on contemporary art, or art similar to that of Aaron Johnson, Waring said, The pictures are all very modern and not very beautiful. Her years of classical training led her to put aesthetically pleasing art 
in higher regard than emotion-provoking contemporary art. Since she held this type of art in such high esteem, her painting black people in this style is her way of glorifying them. Laura Waring's portraits of famous Harlem Renaissance artists are some of the most prominent examples of this. This set of art, entitled Portraits of Outstanding Americans of Negro Origin, includes people such as W.E.B. Du Bois, James Weldon Johnson, Marian Anderson, and Jesse Redmond Fawcett. Her painting these black activists and artists in a traditional way that is pleasing to the eye is her way of making them and their respective art forms dignified. She shows through these portraits that Fawcett's poetry is just as beautiful and distinguished as Shakespeare's, and Marian Anderson's singing is just as distinguished as a European opera singer. Laura Wheeler Waring is the perfect example of someone who can combine both pride in her heritage and the traditional European idea of fine art. Although her early art may have been a bit cookie-cutter impressionism, by the end of the Harlem Renaissance, she had found her voice and her own style of expressing herself through painting. Like many other Harlem Renaissance artists, she used this period of time as a means to learn and grow through her art and become one of America's most famous and praised portrait artists to this day.